Hey everybody, welcome again back to French Corner Baptist Church. It's Brother Eric, and uh, it's Wednesday night, and we're glad that you're tuned in with us. We're glad that you're here, um, that we can continue the Bible study that we started, the Bible study based on the teachings of Dr. Milton Short, on how to make the New Testament simple. Again, like I said the last two weeks, it's not that we're trying to simplify God's Word, but that we're trying to simplify the understanding of how it all flows together. And once you really understand that flow and, and see how everything took place within a certain amount of time and within this time frame, it's really interesting to, to see just how everything uh, meshes and gels together. So we've been talking about that there are 27 books. We've been talking about that there are eight authors. We've been talking about uh, um, uh, how there are eight distinct uh, time periods, four time periods found in the gospel accounts, four time periods found in the book of Acts. We have discovered that in the first five books that the 90% uh, of the entire narrative of the New Testament can be found in those five books because when you get to the 21 epistles, uh, the letters that are written after the book of Acts, you discover that all 21 of those letters, all 21 of those books were actually written during the 30-year span of the book of Acts. So you've got uh, the life and times of Jesus in the gospel accounts. You've got the life and times of the early church, the first 30 years of the church, which includes all of the epistles. And then you have the revelation, <clears throat> um, which uh, John wrote, uh, at the ripe old age of, of about 94, 95, 96, right in there. And, um, uh, and John died at the age of 100, uh, right about the year of 100 AD. So we see here that, that that is yet to come. That is the book of prophecy. And there are things that are, are yet to come about uh, uh, what John saw in the Revelation. So eight time periods, four time periods in the... Um, uh, gospel accounts, four time periods in the book of Acts. And now what we're going to show you is, as as um, uh, Dr. Uh, Short just so perfectly maps out for us, is that those eight time periods can actually be broken up into what Dr. Short calls 44 bite-sized pieces. Now there's no way we can cover all 44 tonight. So uh, if you're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, no, I'm not going to do that to you, I promise. But we're going to start with looking at these 44 pieces. And when you see how each of these, uh, let's just take the gospel accounts. When we see how each of these four time periods breaks up into um, uh, the, the subsections uh, that we will see, you're going to be amazed at how you will understand the flow of the time of the New Testament uh, even better. So um, let's go ahead again, and we'll open the Bible study up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to start looking at the first part of the 44 uh, bite-sized pieces of the New Testament. So let's pray. Father God, your word is incredibly easy to understand. Father, you, everything is mapped out exactly as you want it to be. Every story, every parable, every record, Every prophecy is in the spot that you desired for it, is written as you want it written. Father, we thank you, God, that the, the New Testament, the Bible as a whole, was not written by men and women, but it was written by you through the hand of these men and women. And Lord, as we look at the New Testament again tonight, I thank you, God, for these eight men that you have used so that we will have a better understanding of our Savior, and that we will have a better understanding of the history of our church, history of the body of Christ. So Lord, I pray now, God, that you will just uh, show us uh, a, a new understanding, show us, Father, a better comprehension of your word. And God, we just praise you for this. And I thank you, Father, for Dr. Short and for his study of your word. And God, that we can use that study tonight um, to help us understand your word better. God, we love you and we thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. 
All right, so tonight we're looking in at what Dr. Short calls the 44 bite-sized pieces of the New Testament. And according to Dr. Short's study, there is not one single verse in the New Testament story that does not fit into one of these 44 subsections that we're going to outline over the next couple of weeks. Every verse in the New Testament, with the exception of Revelation, takes place during one of these time periods. So here we go. So we said that the first four time periods of the New Testament revolved around Jesus' birth uh, and the first 30 years of his life. That was the first time period. Second time period was Jesus' public ministry. Everything that took place from uh, uh, right after his uh, uh, temptation in the wilderness by Satan all the way through to his uh, uh, triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Then there's the Passion Week. That's the next time frame of the gospel accounts. And that is from the uh, triumphant entry on that Sunday all the way through to his crucifixion uh, and burial uh, on the next uh, weekend. And then the last time period of the New Testament is his resurrection and the next 40 days. And this is everything post-resurrection during, during the 40 days, excuse me, when Jesus walked and talked and revealed himself to his disciples up until the Sea of Galilee when he ascended back into heaven. All of the gospel accounts fit under those four time periods. So now we're going to take a look at uh, those time periods and break those down individually. So we're going to begin with the first time period, which is Jesus' birth and the first 30 years uh, of his life. We said last week that um, uh, this section, this time period, is found in less than nine chapters of the New Testament. That's it. We only have nine chapters. We only have 117 verses committed to telling us about the first 30 years of the life of Jesus Christ. So in these nine chapters, in these 117 verses, we can actually break those up into eight subsections. Okay? So here's the eight things that you will find in those nine chapters that take place in the first 30 years of the life of Jesus Christ. First of all, those nine chapters tell us about the birth of Jesus and the birth of John the Baptist. We will find those accounts within that time frame. We will also see the account of the flight to Egypt when the angel told uh, Joseph to take Mary and her child and to flee to Egypt so that the child's life would be saved from, from uh, Herod's wrath. We will also see that Jesus' trip to the temple at the age of 12, this takes place in, this, uh, in these uh, uh, nine chapters. The next thing is the ministry of John the Baptist. We have everything that's detailed about John the Baptist's ministry is found within these nine chapters, the first 30 years of the Bible. We also see the 40 days in the wilderness, the 40 days of temptation. When Jesus, if you remember the story, Jesus goes to the Jordan River and John says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And Jesus says, I've come to be baptized. Not that he needed to be forgiven of sins and, and baptized in remission of sin, but that he was coming to, to publicly express his public ministry, his dedication to serving the Lord God. And so John baptizes Jesus by full immersion, brings him back up, and immediately the Holy Spirit falls on him like a dove, and, and the great voice is heard, the voice of God, and he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then the Bible says immediately the Holy Spirit took Jesus to the wilderness where for 40 days he did not eat, 40 days he did not drink, 40 days he fasted. And then Satan, of course, attacks him with the temptations, quotes scripture to try to persuade him to go against the will of God. But of course, Jesus is God and he is able to overcome 
the temptations of the devil. So all this is within these nine chapters as well. There are three more things that we find in this first 30 years. We find that the priests and the Levites, they will investigate John. They'll investigate John the Baptist and um, uh, they will uh, begin to, to uh, see if he is who he is begin to try to understand why he talks about Jesus, why he preaches about Jesus. This takes place in the first 30 years. Then we will see that John's, I mean, excuse me, Jesus' visit with John after 40 days in the wilderness. He goes back to visit John. He goes to spend time with him. And, and, and then we also see um, the disciples where they begin to follow Jesus, where he begins to call them and he says, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And these men begin to drop everything they know. They begin to abandon their lives and abandon their families and abandon their incomes and abandon everything they know to follow this great man who is so charismatic, who's, who's got something so different about him. I think the curiosity just overwhelmed them. They just needed to know. So these eight events all fall in these nine chapters. These eight events all take place in the 117 verses that make up the time frame that is the first 30 years of the life of Jesus, the first 30 years of the New Testament. So there you go. You can start piecing it all together. Now we're going to move into the second time frame of the New Testament, which is Jesus' public ministry. Now, Jesus' public ministry um, actually can be broken up into five, what, what, what Dr. Short calls five circuits. Now, this is pretty interesting, I think, how we, we break the rest of the, the this time up uh, of, of Jesus' life. So, in the first circuit, this is what we see uh, in, in the life of Jesus. In the first circuit, Jesus returns to Galilee. It's after he gets his disciples, he returns back to Galilee. He, he uh, 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 goes back home. He turns the water to wine at the wedding feast of Cana. Uh, this is his first public miracle, the first miracle that's recorded for us to see. Jesus and his mothers and his disciples, the trip they take to Capernaum. Jesus goes to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And while he's there, he cleanses the temple. This takes place. Many people begin to believe him as he teaches and as he heals people while he is there at Jerusalem. And then, of course, this brings the great John 3.16 when Nicodemus comes to visit him at night to find out how a man must be born again. These uh, subsections right here, these uh, items that I've just mentioned make up the first circuit of the ministry of Jesus. Now, um, here's the interesting thing. All of these events take place in less than two months. From the time that he arrives to, to Galilee, just before the wedding feast of Cana, until the third chapter of John, when Nicodemus comes to visit him, that's all less than two months that all this takes place in the life of Christ. The second circuit that we can break this time frame into uh, um, actually is the next year. We've got these first th uh, less than two months of Jesus' public ministry, and now the next year. Here's what all happens in the next year. Jesus stops near Jerusalem and baptizes near the, the same place where John is baptizing. We've got that record account. A controversy arrives, uh, uh, arises excuse me, over baptism, and, and there's a great debate over who is baptizing more people, John or Jesus. Who is more important, the Baptist or Jesus? Who is the greater man of God, John or Jesus? This controversy begins, and, and, and of course we know that some of the followers of John begin to become followers of Jesus and because they are interested in, and uh, captivated by the teachings of Christ. We have the story of Jesus and the woman at the well in Samaria. We have uh, the story where Jesus begins to teach and begins to heal all around Nazareth. 
we have where Jesus moves his quote-unquote headquarters. He moves them to Capernaum. He begins to call his disciples, begins to call the rest of the disciples. Uh, we have the story of where he goes to Peter's house and he heals Peter's mother-in-law. We have where the 12 apostles are officially named. When we get the names of all 12 men that have been called to follow Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount takes place during the first year of the life of the ministry of Jesus. Um, uh, he receives the inquiry from John the Baptist, and he is anointed at Simon's house. All these things take place. After ministering widely in Galilee, he returns to Jerusalem to attend the second Passover feast during his ministry. So that's how we know a year has passed. He has come for the Passover in the first circuit because uh, uh, from the time of the uh, wedding at Cana to the Passover, only about two months has passed. And now he returns to Jerusalem to take place in the Passover feast once again. So a year has taken place, and while he is there, taking uh, the, during the Passover, he heals the man at the pool who had been waiting uh, for the quote-unquote troubling of waters for nearly 38 years. So this is how we begin to see, when you begin to read the stories, when you begin to read the scripture of the New Testament, of the gospel accounts, you can read it and go, ah, this took place in the first two months. This took place in the year that followed those first two months. It all begins to process differently when we have that grasp on time, the grasp on the chronology uh, of everything. So the third circuit that takes place during the time of Jesus' ministry, um, uh, uh, apparently Jesus skipped the third Passover uh, during his ministry. So um, uh, this circuit lasted from the second Passover to the third Feast of Tabernacles. We really don't have an account of the third Passover feast. So from the second uh, Passover to the third uh, uh, Feast of the Tabernacles, which is roughly about one and a half years. So we got two months, we got the one year, now we're looking at one and a half years. Uh, in the life of Jesus. So what happens during this one and a half years? Well, Jesus is returned to Galilee. Uh, the 12 are sent out two by two. John the Baptist is killed. He's beheaded. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, Jesus and Peter walk on the water. Many begin to misunderstand his message and start to go away from Jesus. Um, Jesus travels to Tyre and Sidon. From Tyre, he goes to uh, Decapolis. Uh, from there, or while there, the 4,000 are fed. Then we have Peter's great confession. We have the transfiguration that happens. Uh, Jesus goes to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Tabernacles. And while he's there, the woman that was uh, taken into adultery is forgiven. So all this takes place in the next year and a half after uh, the first Passover that Jesus goes to. Um, so it, it's interesting, like I said, to put it in context. All the remaining events are in the very final part of his ministry because it's only six months now to his crucifixion. So the fourth and the fifth circuit all take place within six months. That's all that's left. He is six months away from the crucifixion. So the fourth circuit, the fourth part of Jesus' public ministry, only takes place, well, actually it lasted two months and ten days. So when we follow where Jesus forgives the lady who was caught in adultery after the Feast of the Tabernacles, these things only take place uh, within two months and ten days following that. The 70 are sent out. Jesus visits in the house of Martha and Mary. The disciples are taught how to pray. Jesus continues teaching and he continues healing. He returns to Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication. And then the religious Jews attempt to stone him while he's actually teaching at the feast. So all these things group together within the next two months and ten days. And then we come into the fifth and the final circuit 
of the breakdown of the public ministry, and this actually takes place over three months and 20 days. These are the last three months and 20 days before the crucifixion. Um, Jesus leaves uh, to go to Perea. Lazarus is raised from the dead. The chief priests begin to plot over the death of Jesus. Jesus begins his trip toward Jerusalem for the Passover, which will end in his crucifixion. The ten leopards are healed. The blind, uh, blind Bartimaeus is healed. Zacchaeus climbs a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Jesus arrives at Bethany. And now where everything is set for the triumphant entry of Jesus. And we're going to look at that next week. So we see here that the first um, 30 days of the life of Jesus uh, is in, uh, 30 years, excuse me, of the life of Jesus in 117 verses and nine chapters. And now we see that the rest of the gospel accounts that talk about the public ministry of Jesus all fall in place of the three, three and a half years. Two months to one year to one and a half years to two months and 10 days to three months and 20 days. So all of these things take place within this three and a half year time frame uh, of his public ministry. Like I said, for me, this is very interesting because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a time kind of guy. I like to know when things took place. I like to try to map it out and see, well, this happened here and this happened here. And here's what was going on at the time. Then just it, For lack of better words, it makes it more real. Not that I doubt the scripture or not that I think that anything is not real. I'm, that's just how my mind processes. I'm kind of a four-dimensional thinker. And, uh, and, and it's, to me, this is so interesting. And I hope that you'll begin to, to study the scripture and begin to make these notes to the side and say, well, this took place during the second circuit. This took place during the first 30 years. And, 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 and the scripture will just take on a new light and a new meaning to you in that time. So next week, we're going to look at the rest of the gospel account. We're going to look at the last week of Jesus. We're going to look at the, the uh, 40 days uh, that followed the resurrection. And we're going to end the breaking up of the four time periods of the gospel accounts. And then the next week, we'll begin to look at the uh, uh, way that the uh, Acts, the four time periods of the Acts of the Apostles, and how those are broken up and where each of the um, epistles fall into place in that time frame. So thank you so much for spending the time with us tonight. And I hope that this was a blessing to you. And I hope this was a true learning experience. And I hope, uh, again, that the Bible is just, you, you just have a fresh look at it. Pray that you'll be safe. Pray that you'll be blessed. Hey, it, it, let me also tell you that this Sunday coming up, May 17th, we're going to be having the doors back open. Um, for anyone that would like to come, that's ready to come back, that's ready to, to visit and be with us, uh, our service is going to be at 1030 on Sunday morning. We're not having Sunday school, no Sunday school, but we will have a 1030 a.m. service on Sunday morning and sun doors will be open. We'll have to spread out the seating, but that's okay. It'll just be great to have everybody back under one roof again. So we hope that you can make it, hope that you'll be here to join us for worship on Sunday. And uh, we just thank God so much that we are starting to move in uh, to the stages where we can get back to our normal worship here. Thank you so much again for being with us and we just praise God. Let me, let me wind us up with a word of prayer. Lord God, your word is so real. and We want it to be real in our lives and we truly want to understand the life of Christ, the mission of Christ ministry of Christ, and our duty to Christ as Christians. Lord, just help us to study your word every day. And God, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for being with us tonight. Be safe, be blessed, and we sure look forward to hopefully seeing you on Sunday morning. Good night.